Morning guys. Sun is just starting to come up. The days are getting shorter as we go into winter here. And the dew and moisture overnight accumulates on Abel. Pretty soon that'll be frost in the mornings. So before we get to that point, I got a couple other projects I want to finish up. Do a little unboxing here and I'll show you what I got. All right, got a couple of things to show you guys today. Parts that I was wait, waiting on to finish the camera system. I'll show you this one first. These are about, I don't know, 35 to 40 bucks on either Amazon or eBay. But basically what it is, is it's a little DVR box for um, cameras. And you can see here, you got your four cameras in, your video out, and then you've got power input here, which is variable DC 9 to 36 volts. You've got a remote control that plugs in here. Some of these have a mic on them. I don't think this one does. It might. I haven't opened it up to look, but... And then you got a micro card slot here for 64 gigabyte micro card, micro SD card. And then uh, these dip switches are for the mirror and a couple other settings that are on here. Anyhow, handy little box to have. All the cameras are basically going to plug in here and then the video out is going to go to this. And I'll show you what that is here in a moment. Uh, I just want to say I tried to order this. It was out of stock here in the U.S. I tried to order it um, on eBay. <coughs> and the seller from the U.K. sent me a tracking number and never shipped the product. I mean, just ridiculous. And then every time I'd message him, he'd send me a screenshot of the tracking number, which didn't do me any good. So I canceled that out. Uh, ordered this from GPS City, the same company that I got the diesel cam from. So... Just got here uh, yesterday when we were out and about. I don't know why Garmin does this. They should have just included this on their original mount. It would have made life a whole lot easier for a bunch of us that don't like the wireless system that they have for the cameras. But anyhow, the difference here is you have a video import. And so with the video import, you got like a composite cable that plugs into it. I have one that has the male end and not the female end, but anyhow, these two components will get installed today. These little, um, this is for the DVR. This has like this little toggle button, I guess, to change between the view modes and then an IR input for the remote to change view modes. It comes with the remote, um, and you can see you can change the view modes for like side view camera and whatnot. Here's a triple view or like maybe rear view and two side views or two side views. Whatever you can change it around. But anyhow let's get started on that. Brief intermission here. I was digging through my junk drawer. Came across this tool that I forgot I had. I'm wondering if I can use this to pull my steering wheel off. I'm gonna I'm going to stop for here for a minute and see if it'll work. Alright, it looks like it will work, but I'm going to have to um, build a jig for it. Um, I'll come back to this in another episode and uh, attempt this again, but it looks like it will work. I just can't leave well enough alone. So, I took this half inch tap, and believe it or not, these two bigger holes in the steering wheel... Are the perfectly size or the, they drilled these the perfect size to run a half inch tap down half inch 13 so now basically what I got to do is get some half inch bolts that stick out and a little plate and I can put that uh, pulling pin on there and try to pull this off all right guys scouring through my spare parts bins this is a solution I came up with it's a piece of double strut and I got some stainless uh, all thread and some stainless strut nuts in there. Um, this thing is it's either going to rip the threads out or it's going to take the steering wheel off. Not sure which is going to happen here. 
here we go. If you got kids watching this with you, you might want to get them out of the room because I'm going to curse. Fair warning. It worked. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That is freaking awesome. I got it off of there. I'm so stoked. Thank you, Jared Ekema, on the Facebook LMTV page for that suggestion. That worked freaking awesome. I can clean the splines up on this. And I can actually pull the dash panel off and work behind the dash panel without it being rubbed up against the steering wheel. So. Also, this needs to be adjusted up a little bit higher so the turn signal cancels. So, killed about three birds with one stone on that. Thank you. George Penn and Luke Wells, you guys were asking for drive line angles, so I'm going to see if I can accommodate that request. Let me turn the level on here. Oh, come on. Please tell me the batteries aren't dead. Ah, for crying out loud. Stand by. Let's try this again. Oh my goodness. Still not working. Hang on. Battery terminals were covered in battery powder acid fun stuff from old batteries. Anyhow, let's give this a try again. Oh boy. Let's turn it on. Good deal. Good deal. So let's zero this up. Let's use the frame rail, because that's probably the best thing I can think of to zero on. Okay, we're at zero. Let's go under the truck. There's your rear driveline angle. Looks like 7.4 degrees I'm sitting on level ground I can try it somewhere else too these drive lines are 100% brand new so it kind of gives you a good idea I have MRAP differentials I don't know if that makes a difference the high speed gearing there's the front one front one looks a little more extreme at 12 degrees um, I don't know what else. If you guys need me to measure off of something else, let me know in the comments below. A regularly scheduled program here for the cameras. Um, I just temporarily tied these up when we went camping this weekend. So they're ready to go. Gonna try and figure out a spot to mount that uh, DVR box. Somewhere along here might be pretty good. We'll see. Something else I did that I really liked you guys might like it too. I'm gonna try to carry this theme throughout the vehicle. But I did my favorite paint on this and then I reused some uh, grade eight hardware off of Subaru to mount that back up. Uh, I'd love to carry that throughout the cab. It'll probably happen over time. It's not gonna happen overnight. I guess the next easiest one to do would be the, the uh, sugar box cover. But we'll see. Let's figure out where to put that DVR box. I'm kind of digging this spot right here. I think I have some double-sided Velcro left that might work pretty good. Or I might screw it into that cover if there's enough depth. Enough depth. Holy moly, I can't talk this morning. Uh, what else do we got? What comes out of this side? Oh, just the memory card. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. There are some holes over here. Uh, I don't know how well that's going to look. That's not too bad. It's still accessible. We'll figure it out here. It'll be a surprise. Okay. I got it mounted there with uh, some heavy duty Velcro. I think that's going to be the best solution. It'll cause 
the least amount of protrusion of wires in this area. Um, working on wiring up a switch. Using some spare parts to get some a switch wired up so I can turn these on and off when I need to. Yeah. Making a little bit of headway here. Got this side buttoned up. Only had to make a couple of uh, terminations in here. So I got this side buttoned up, but this other side's gonna take me a little bit longer because I gotta do all the um, wiring for the switch and whatnot. So we'll just keep moving forward. How's it going guys? I got a uh, switch installed. Got the video cable pulled in. Got the majority of this nonsense done. I gotta put the dash back together and I still gotta run a wire in the shelter for the rear camera. And then we're gonna get the, uh, I got a little monitor I use to adjust the cameras. They're obviously not gonna be pointed in the perfect direction and whatnot, so we'll get that done. Guys, I have one of these small TVs that has an AV input and I've got this cable attached to it. And then I ran an extension cable out from the actual camera um, input. Turn the power on. Uh, hook this up and see if we got an image. Turn this baby on. Not sure what camera this is, but see if anything comes up. Now, let's see here. And on that one, let's see the other one. These might be too high of a um, resolution for this little monitor to handle. Let me come back. <coughs> Let me come back, do some testing here, hold on. Crisis averted. The cable that comes with the Garmin is proprietary to the Garmin. It must have different uh, pinouts on the end that goes into the Garmin. Anyhow, um, I was able to get these hooked up. There's one side. And there's the other. You can see my not so fantastic self standing there, huh? Pretty good, yeah. Anyhow, um, I'm going to adjust these cameras and then move into the rear and adjust those and get this dash put back together. Steering wheel went on just as hard as it was to take off. Um, and I went to clean the uh, turn signal and adjust it and one of the little tabs broke off I'll show you <laughs> not a big deal uh, I, I have stuff to fix it I'll show you what I use I've used it in the past it works pretty good see that little tab it won't focus that close I don't think okay so that little tab broke off and this is the stuff that i use guys when you're in a hurry and you want to get stuff done um i've used this in the past it works pretty good it's a two-part system it takes five minutes for it to set up and uh, i usually wait about 15 minutes though just to be sure it's kind of unbelievable that it works that fast but it does and then 24 hours it's at full strength so just another tip. Um, got to work on getting the camera in the in the rear of the shelter set up now. Okay, I'm basically running a cable from here all the way over 
to where it connects right here. Now I purposely ran this older cable that I had sitting around. The red one I cut off the end and that's power. The yellow one is uh, sending the camera signal to the multiplexer box or the DVR box. And the white one is the return for all the cameras. So in theory we could turn the cameras on and have a monitor in here to see the cameras or what the cameras see on that little monitor. So I did that for a secondary. Um, I don't think that this TV has RCA inputs, but they've got to have something that takes an RCA and converts it to uh, an input for HDMI. But we'll see. Okay, I got all that ran. I took all my excess and just kind of bundled it up right there for now. Uh, there's that secondary monitor cable. Ran it all the way over. I put a ground right there and then the camera back there. Now we'll test it. As you can see, I just need to adjust the camera a little bit on this one. It's not too bad. I'll get that done and then we'll go uh, up in the cab and get the Garmin fired up and see what happens. Well, let's see what we can see here. Oh, that's kind of nifty. Um, get rid of the uh, guidance lines. Uh, I have the remote here. I'm going to see if I can get the screens to change around a little bit. Ooh, there we've got one of the backup cameras. I'll have to mess around with this, but it is working, guys. This is pretty awesome. So you can select what camera you want to look at. That one's upside down. I'll have to flip that one. All right, guys, it looks like it works. So I'm stoked. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.